for the Zoo Mafia characters, it's very important for us to be like, okay, what kind of animal are you? What does that do for you? And then also, you know, well, what kind of criminal are you as well? I'm Nerdarchist Ted. And I'm Nerdarchist Dave. Welcome, Welcome to, to Nerdarchy. Nerdarchy. For nerds, by nerds. All right, looks like we're back to some more Zoo Mafia discussions today. Yeah, so we got to start off with what is Zoo Mafia? Indeed, Zoo Mafia is the game that we are creating. Uh, we're doing the design desi diaries here. You can watch uh, the whole playlist, as well as we've got the, the game, the alpha, the beta, however you want to call it, that we're playtesting here on the site as well, Tuesday nights. It's a game all about going wild and doing crime. So essentially, you're a zoo animal, you live in a zoo, but you're also trying to work your way into a crime fa family and become part of the mafia. The setting is 1920s, 1930s-ish, uh, and it is kind of cute and cuddly and brutal. Yeah, we're having an absolute lot of fun with, you know, playing and designing this game as we go. Uh, and you guys can all you know, see what it's like as uh, as we get in these design diaries. Yeah, so we've done a several design diaries where we discuss other games. We've uh, we've done uh, Morkborg, Quest RPG, and Powered by the Apocalypse, uh, you know, how you would hack those. And again, they're also in the that playlist, so you can check those out. So recently, Monty Cook Games released their OGL, their open gaming license for the Cypher system. So today, we're going to look at what would this game, what would Zoo Mafia look like if we were playing in the Cypher system? Yeah, so if you've been following along with these design diaries, you might be like, why are they doing it all of a sudden now? That's why um, it, the, the, it was released afterwards. They had something you could do before, but not on the scale and scope that we needed. Indeed. So we're going to take a look. We're going to see how would we design this game using the immensely popular uh, Cypher system. Yeah. Um, on the playtest, you can check that out. We have been using Power by the Pop Clips. Um, and really, like, you know, why are we talking about all these, these different systems and still, even though we are already using a particular system to hack it? Well, number one is if there becomes more talk and more chatter about a particular system with this game, there's no reason why we couldn't hack into multiple systems for this game, you know, creating different rule sets so that you can play the game as you desire. I, we've definitely been asked, why aren't you doing this in fifth edition Dungeons and Dragons? Uh, you know, so first of all, we're gonna do it with a system where the, we feel really comfortable and confident with and fits the flavor of the game we're going for. And then after after that we might branch out. Indeed. Uh, so if you like the Zoo Mafia stuff that we're doing, you want to see more videos and get access to more information about it, why not sign up for our Zoo Mafia newsletter? It's the easiest and the fastest way you're going to get access to our quick start rules once they are once they are released. Yeah, so you can find a link to that down in the description in one of these cards up here. So with that, let's jump into Cypher System. What Cypher System uh, looks like, how it kind of works, and how we would use it to make Zoo Mafia. So one of the great aspects of the Cypher system is uh, only the players are rolling dice so that the GM can kind of work on their story uh, as, as you play the game and not need to get into any dice rolling. Yeah, and you also use very limited dice. You're going to use a D100 if you're the GM to for random roll charts, most mostly, mostly your ciphers. As a player, you're going to predominantly use the D20 basically to determine, you know, everything, uh, <laughs> except for when you recover your, your pools, which we'll go into that in greater de depth later, you're going to use D6s for that. Yeah, super, super easy. You know, you don't need a lot of stuff in order to, to get heavily into the Cypher system. Those pools are going to be Might, Intellect, and Speed. This is a really unique system because you use those pools as kind of a representation of your... Uh, your ability to do something, so you diminish those pools to try and succeed at something, but at the same time, they're also the representation of what that is for resisting that kind of damage. It's kind of almost hit points at the same time. So that's why it's a pool, it's a resource that both the, you can take damage to and you expend at the same time. Yeah, the, your might, speed, and intellect, they are basically, the, in any other game, they would be your stats. Um, the difference in Cypher System, as you mentioned, your stats that's also double as your hit points per se, or your health, or or your well-being, and then also they are they are expendable 
resource that you can use to make it easier to accomplish certain tasks. Sometimes the only way you can actually accomplish a task is to spend from your pools because the D20 doesn't go up high, high enough. enough. Yeah, so the, there's a difficulty rating within the system everywhere from one to 10, and the, the difficulty challenge that you would need to overcome is gonna be three times that number. Now, you can't roll a 30 on a d20, therefore you must do things to lower that difficulty enough to that it becomes possible, otherwise you are just going to fail. Right, so, but at the bottom is a three, and it is possible that your your pools are so good that you don't even have to, you don't have to spend anything from your pool, and you don't have to, you don't have to- um, Even roll the even die. Even roll the die, because you add, um, automatically, you know, would succeed at that three. Indeed. Uh, so, you know, you know, using the stats uh, for Zoo Mafia, that's really easy, right? Like, that, that's pretty uni uni universal for what we're looking for. Is it strength-based, speed-based, or does it have to do with your mentality? Uh, you know, so pretty easy peasy. Uh, moving into your archetype, your class, you know, what, what you do as a profession. Uh, Cypher System breaks it down by four. You've got warrior, you've got explorer, you've got adept, and you've got speaker. Yeah, so your war, you know, warriors and explorers are kind of your more martial style characters with, you know, one leaning more towards combat and the other, the explorer leaning much more towards, uh, you know, exploration and skills. Indeed. Uh, your adept, this is going to be your magic user. Uh, you know, regardless of how you are getting access to magic, this is where it's going to fall. And this is where I would feel like this whole tier, this whole class yeah. is going to fall off because in <laughs> Zoo Mafia, we're just not really using magic. It's not appropriate for the 1920s Mafia style. Uh, so like we would just say no. Uh, but the, the speaker absolutely makes sense. Uh, and this is going to be your face style character and very much going to be appropriate in a Mafia setting. Yeah, so the other three uh, character types work really well for Zoo Mafia. Like you said, we got the speaker, that's going to be your face type character, your con man. You've got your explorer, your skill-based character. So, like, anything from, like, cracking safes, you know, the driver, really anything that has a, uh, is, has a technical side to it is probably going to fit there. And then your heavies, they're going to probably be your... Um, your hit person or your the thug, thug <laughs> you know, for the warrior, they're going to all work very easy. And then, you know, as we go on through our character progression, we got ways to flavor them to, to, to help with this as well. And the way you're going to flavor those things is with your character descriptor. Uh, so this is, you know, how you go about doing whatever your class is. Basically, descriptors are an adjective that describes your character. It's going to add some more traits and abilities to them, new features, or may increase uh, or de decrease some of your pools. Yeah, so whether you want to be stealthy, whether you want to be lucky, however you want to modify your type of character, this is a great way to do it. And those add features and stats or minuses you know, to your character, really enhancing what it is that you do. Yeah, there's something like 50 of them just out of book. Like, we might have to think differently for Zoo Mafia and come up with ones. Maybe this is where we get our animal aspects because, again, for the Zoo Ma Mafia characters, it's very important for us to be like, okay, what kind of animal are you? What does that do for you? And then also, you know, well, what kind of criminal are you as well? We want these both of these aspects to be meaningful in Zoo Mafia. So any system that we hack, we have to keep that. We have to keep that in mind. All right. So next up is focus, and I've got my you know cipher system book here. Not all foci are appropriate for every genre. The genre chapters in part three provide guidance, but this section offers some broad generalizations. Obviously, the GM can include whatever foci are available in their setting. Foci end up being an important distinction in this case, because command's mental powers, for example, makes it clear that psychic abilities exist in the setting, just as Howls at the Moon implies the existence of lycanthropes like werewolves. And pilot Starcraft, of course, requires starships available to be piloted. Uh, so, like, you could, you could kind of look at the different foci in genres, whether you've got fantasy, modern or horror, science fiction, superheroes, or like, you know, in our case, we would have a modern-esque kind of thing, and we'd have to look through and really tailor what we feel fits in, in this kind of setting. Obviously, pilot starcraft and commands mental powers aren't good because you're not using 
uh, StarCraft, and yeah. we don't have magic or psychic abilities. Yeah, so Foci is an area where we'd probably tailor the game a lot, right? Instead of, you know, I mentioned, like, well, maybe the wild comes from descriptors, but maybe it doesn't. Maybe it comes from Foci instead. Um, and, like, that's how we discover, that's how we differentiate, you know, one, our uh, Zoom Mafia cipher system from other cipher systems, because all of our Foci are based upon the animal mm -hmm. that you choose, right? And then there's a list of those. Um, and it's kind of, it's kind of interesting in a sense when you build your character in cypher system you might be you know there's a you know adjective your type and then your your foci which is kind of like a noun yeah your your action noun who verbs is kind of yes is kind of how things break down uh so like you could be like all right well i'm going to be brash warrior who needs no weapons like all right that could easily be done for a zoo mafia but i you think know. you just described oliver <laughs> I mean, it's entirely possible. Uh, but, you know, blazes with radiance or builds robots. Eh, don't Not really, so much. <laughs> don't really feel that those kind of foci work for Zoom Office. So you really need to focus on and make sure that you're building a character that, that fits well. Uh, yeah, absolutely. So that's definitely an area where we have to tweak and make it work for Zoo Mafia. But like, that's the fun of g designing games as well. 100%, 100%. So one of the things about Foci as well to keep in mind is you generally aren't going to want two characters that have the same Foci when you're talking about Cypher System. I know, and that kind of really fits in with the concept of what we're looking for with Zoo Mafia because legitimately the style that we have within the narrative of Zoo Mafia is the old way of doing things was the family where you had all animals of a, of a same type, a same animal working together as a mafia and that's the old style. But now things are done differently so that the mafia is made up of a variety of type of, of animals and that is the new aspect of family that we're trying to sell with it so that you could have an, a snake, an owl, an otter, and a spider all working together as we currently do, uh, yeah. you know, within a particular mob or mafia. So that that's what we want to kind of showcase the fun elements of this particular game. Yeah, but at the same time, I think you're like when we're making those tweaks, I would be like, I wouldn't be against like two characters playing the animals, same animal species. You wouldn't want them to play the exact same thing because then, you know, if you had two bears that are thugs, right, then right. it's like, okay, you're going to have all the same abilities. You're going to overlap. It's not going to be nearly as interesting. Right. Um, but two bears and one of them, you know, is a thug and, and one of them is, you know, doing something different like the driver. He likes to drive because, you know, who doesn't want a bear on a unicycle? Um, <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> Uh, you know, so so I wouldn't want to like, totally exclude that either. So that's something we'll have to take into consideration and look at. And that's why that's where it will be kind of tricky, like for us to figure out where the animal aspects come from and where the crime aspects come from. You know, the natural fit seems to be um, crime aspects from your class, while your animal aspects aspects will come from other places. I agree. But we know Cipher System just told us it shouldn't be the foci if we want them to be able to be the same. But that being said, maybe there's a way for us to tweak foci in our version of the game. So yeah, it's okay. I, I, I think there are definitely some ways to do it, and uh, it would require some uh, some workshopping, but totally doable. All right, next up, XP and advancement. All right, so this is, this is pretty easy. You gain uh, XP through play and through GM intrusion. So you're going to get XP for just, you know, generally running a session, but a GM can do an intrusion on what's going on, causing some problems, causing some damage, uh, and this is going to going to help you advance. Yeah, it's never fun to have the GM change the narrative on you, but the GM's doing that anyway, just through normal play anyway. Yeah, so the cool thing about Cypher System is when a GM does an intrusion, um, one, you can tell them, no, if you have XP, you can buy off their intrusion. If you don't have XP or you choose to accept it, you get one XP and you get to give one XP to another player. Once you clean, accumulate four pieces of XP, that's an advancement. Once you advance four things, so basically 16 XP, that's an advancement in your tiers and tiers are kind of like your levels in Cypher System. Yeah, so you, you buy these small micro purchases to level up specific abilities, uh, but then when you get to that, that fourth purchase, that tears you up, which automatically 
automatically grant you more abilities in that new tier for your class and for your foci. Yeah, well, while this feature doesn't particularly enhance or detract from Zoo Mafia, I like it. You know, we we like the... Everyone likes leveling up, right? Oh, indeed. I, I actually... <laughs> I hate when I play on uh, stream D&D games and they never level the characters. It is the worst. So this has, like, the leveling built right into yeah, it. Yeah, it, it, this, is, this is fabulous. When we move into equipment within Cypher System, this is one of uh, the, these games that I find uh, that everything is done vastly differently than other game systems. You actually have a wealth score, and there are different tiers worth of what the cost is on something. So if you buy something so far below your tier of wealth, it doesn't actually affect you at all. So you could have as much as you really need, and that kind of fits well with the aspect of what you're doing when you're committing crime. Because you're, if you're a crime person, you, you tend to be stealing and taking and have more money than the average person is going to have. So you could be like, well, I, I have as much of this as I truly need. And I think that fits well. The wealth system is very ambiguous in, uh, in Cypher system. It's like, you know, is the item inexpensive? Is it moderately expensive? Is it expensive? Is it very expensive? Uh, so, so it's not even, it's not even, there's not even a, a currency number. per se yeah. or a number to determine it. It's kind of ambiguous. And, you know, as long as you're not like a uh, very number crunchy, very technical, gritty player, then it works fine. Some people really like that other aspect of mm -hmm. it. So Cypher system would not work well for those people. Yeah, and you know, that that's fine. But for us, like you could literally do a job and as opposed to the GM having to figure out, well, how much money did you earn? It could be like, okay, you can all you know, move up a tier in regards to your wealth score. And that would fit, you know, really well to be like, okay, you know, now we're living high on the hog because you pulled a really successful job. So next up we have armor and weapons and they work, they both work very similar in the sense that it is a, it is a light, medium, or heavy piece of equipment. And if you're talking about armor, in what that does, it lessens the amount of damage you take by one, two, or three. Um, but then also it hinders your speed uh, stat. Whenever you try and draw from your speed pool, it's going to cost you more if you're wearing medium or heavy armor. With those weapons, the weapons are gonna do two, four, and six damage. Uh, so like, obviously you wanna use a big heavy weapon if somebody's wearing heavy armor because they're gonna take half of that, half of that swing off. So definitely looking into, you know, those kinds of things. And that those kind of numbers work well because they're low enough and you don't actually have to roll dice. You know how much damage you do. You know how much damage you can subtract uh, within something like this. Yeah. Also, I will say the the light weapons give you an asset for when you're attacking. So meaning that you're more likely to hit with them than you are with the other weapons. So, so that's kind of cool as well. Now, the thing is, when you say light, medium, and heavy, you then deter, you can, they can be whatever, right? It's just like, does it require two hands to use? Like you said, um, you know, is it, you know, quick to use? Uh, armor in Zoo Mafia is, there's, there's not a lot of armor. Like finally, one of the players just acquired something that does kind of count as armor, but it is the lowest tier. And if it was a Cypher system game, that leather, that leather jacket that Ted's character just acquired would be considered light armor and reduce do the the least amount of reduction of damage yeah so that in our game using cypher system we just probably would not have those things uh because you would get really odd looks i mean even something like medium armor would like would draw a lot of attention it's like what are you looking to do that you need that well it's also it's just not readily available unless like you would literally have to be wearing medieval style armor now there in the 1920s and 30s there were bulletproof vests and there is some body armor mm -hmm. but it's not you know it's going to be much bulkier than it is today not as effective as it is today uh so it is a possibility um but i think any kind of armor that we actually build into the game is going to tend to be more based on the animal's hide right. than it is on equipment. Like, but like we said, there are some instances where it might matter. So, you know, you we would have it within the rule set, but there would be that caveat, that little addendum of, you know, this is not going to be readily available. This is not something that characters should easily have access to. Yeah, uh, correct. 
Now, another great thing about the Cypher system, and you know, it's literally right there in the name, Cyphers. These one-use items that, you know, imply technology or the consumability of the item, and every character is limited usually to two or three, sometimes more, ciphers that you get are expected to use, and they make things easier and, you know, more manageable through the course of play. Yeah, they they tend in in uh, cipher systems like you said they're either advanced technology or they are magic items essentially. And you use them, they're done, then you you know, you hopefully you'll find some more. This is actually I I find ciphers very hard to use in the modern setting that doesn't have supernatural elements mm -hmm. to it or super tech elements to it because there are there's equipment that probably would function as any cipher you would make. Like, you know, we had talked about before, maybe dynamite could be a cipher, but, or is it really just a piece of equipment, right? right. Because if you look in the cipher system rule book, they probably do have like explosives and stuff like that. Uh, so this is one element of the game and we have to think really long and hard on or possibly even remove. Yeah, so it's interesting, uh, you know, there there are thoughts of, you know, maybe doing something that does a little bit more damage or, you know, something that, you know, changes a, a particular interaction type, uh, but it would require, as Dave says, really thinking and tweaking. There are a whole nother level beyond ciphers of artifacts, and these are basically permanent ciphers that always have an ability, always have a thing. In all the cipher games I've played, I haven't really seen or used artifacts uh, because, you know, the games haven't gone on long enough to, to really see that happen, but it is a cool aspect of the game. I would view ciphers as something for Zoom Mafia as maybe something human-ish that, you know, the, the, the animals are just getting access to the first time. So maybe it's a, a more advanced, you know, weapon that is not going to work right every time that you use it. And, you know, you have to like kind of keep fidgeting with it. But, you know, that, My, that's... I do have a thought for ciphers. Sure. You know, instead of having an ob object or something that you acquire, it, uh, have it as uh, one use traits that the characters unlock that or that revolve around their wild animal side. Mm. Uh, so that, you know, whatever it is, you know, like a honey badger can freak out for a duration during an encounter when they have it. Like you can only have a certain amount of the amount of these traits, just like ciphers, you would use the same rules and certain things happen in the story that unlocks them for that character until they use them. They can still, they have a limit. They can only have so many at a time. If they don't use them, you know, they're just going to, they're just going to have those and they won't get access to new ones. But like the, the GM would constantly try and tailor them to the type of animal they are. I think that could be really interesting and, and be representative of Zoo Mafia and using the, the, the Cypher system rule set as is. It wouldn't necessarily be a physical thing, but more of like a mental, this is the headspace I'm in. And you know what? I'm I'm playing the 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 honey badger and well for whatever reason I'm just not in an angry mood and I can't get angry and freak out because I don't have that particular one right now. <laughs> you know, it's a funny to have the mechanics affect the narration. But if you want to know more about the cipher system specifically, we have an article over on nerdrookie.com you can go check out. Flex your RPG muscles with the cipher system. Let us know what do you think. Should we use Cypher System and do a version of that to hack Zoo Mafia? Good idea, bad idea. What do you think of Zoo Mafia overall? Leave a comment down below and let us know what you think. While you're down there, don't forget to like, share, subscribe. Go ahead and ring that notification bell. You know what you know you want to. Quick reminder, we drop new videos here Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays, so come on back. But you can't wait till then. No worries, we got you covered. You can check out you can check out the last Zoo Mafia design diary we did when we talk about the dice up here. So until next time, stay, stay nerdy. nerdy.